Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're having a look at one of the most interesting investigations and one of probably uh, everyone's biggest nightmare when they first come across it, the ECG. Specifically, what do each of the waves of an ECG correspond to in terms of the actual cardiac physiology? So with that said, let's have a look at what an ECG actually is. An ECG stands for an electrocardiogram. Electro refers to electricity, cardio refers to the heart, and lastly, gram refers to a uh, visual depictation of something. So therefore, an electrocardiogram allows us to observe the electrical activity of our heart. And though this uh, list is not endless, some of the very common things an ECG may be used for is to observe ischemic or hypoxic damage to the heart in things like acute coronary syndromes, specifically in a condition that we're uh, referring to as the ST elevated or a myocardial infarction or STEMI. It may be used to detect issues with the rhythm of the heart or disorders which affect heart rhythm in things that we call an arrhythmia. In, and a very common example of this is atrial fibrillation. Another thing that we may use an ECG for is to detect some conductive structural abnormalities in the heart in things like bundle branch blocks. Now we will do a separate video covering all of these and how to actually interpret an ECG. But in this video, we're just going to find out exactly what each wave shows in an ECG. So in order to understand that, let's just review how our heart works. Now remember in the posterior lateral wall of our right atrium, we have a very specialized thing here called the sinoatrial node. Our sinoatrial node contains pacemaker cells which are able to depolarize and send out electrical impulses without the input of our nervous system. And this is what makes them so special as they can send off uh, waves of electricity across both atria, causing them to contract simultaneously. Now, in order for our ventricles to contract and push blood from our ventricles into the rest of the circulation, this wave of electricity must make its way from the atria into the ventricles. And it cannot take a easy route going directly from the atria to the ventricles because of this uh, ring of fibrous tissue that uh, separates the atria and the ventricles that we call the annulus fibrosis, which goes around the atrioventricular group. So therefore, this wave of depolarization actually makes its way to the AV node first, or the atrioventricular node first, where it is delayed for a short time to fully allow the atria to contract and empty into the ventricles. Following this, our electrical impulse is passed over into our intraventricular septum, where it makes its way down the bundles of his, or something that we call the bundle branches. And we have a right bundle branch and a left bundle branch. And once it makes its way into the apex of the heart, we get depolarization occurring from the a apex of the heart or bottom of the ventricles. And this wave of depolarization moves its way along the Purkinje fibers to finally cause depolarization of our myocardial sites or our muscle so uh, cells of the heart and cause ventricular contraction. Now, we can actually detect these waves of depolarization by placing electrodes all over the body. And these electrodes will detect electricity either coming towards them or going away from them. And what they actually detect, we can plot on a graph which reads voltage against time. And when we put these electrodes and when we get a, a reading from this, what we get is a very special tracing that looks a little bit like this. And it's often something I'm sure that we've seen many times before and may have even been scared of. I know I certainly was scared when I first saw this. So what does each of these waves actually refer to within the cardiac cycle? Well, let's just get rid of all the clutter and actually have a look at each segment. So at the beginning of it, we can see we have a flat line. This is where we have no electrical activity of the heart and a good time for this may be between a heartbeat. Our sinoatrial node fires off causing atrial depolarization and we detect this as the first deflection that we call the P wave. And as I said, it shows arterial depolarization. Remember, our uh, wave of electricity is actually held up at the atrioventricular node next for a short amount of time. And we detect this as a flat line on the ECG that we call the PR segment. Clinically speaking, we're more interested in, in the PR interval, which ranges from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. 
The next thing, remember, that happens is that we get depolarization of the uh, atrioventricular septum and then finally of those Purkinje fibers. And we detect this as a QRS complex. Q wave being the first uh, line going down, R wave being the first line going up, and then the S wave being the next uh, line coming down. Finally, we have a period of relative uh, non-activity in the heart as the muscle is contracting. Following this, we have to reset our heart to pump out blood again. And therefore, we may have, we must have repolarization of the heart, and we see this in the form of a T wave. Now you can see, if we have an issue at any specific points in this area, we can localize exactly where within the heart something has gone wrong. Say, for instance, we did not have a P wave, or we had some abnormality of the P wave, then immediately we should think, is our sinus node working properly? Or is our atria working properly? If we had an issue with our QRS complex, for instance, it was too wide, we have to stop and question, is the conductive tissue in our ventricles working properly? And lastly, if we had an issue with the T wave, we have to ask the question, is our heart repolarizing properly? That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.